Hello everybody, Jordan here. The PH is silent. In my last video on the Silver Flame, I incorrectly stated that the religious movement known as the Blood of Vol was evil. Plenty of you pointed out that they aren't evil per se and are actually more of a neutral religion on the alignment scale. Because of these comments, I started researching more on the Blood of Vol, and here we are with another Eberron video. The religious organization known as the Blood of Vol worships no god, but rather the divinity within every creature. Their creed is, look not to the skies, nor the depths below, nor even to the distant past or future. Seek the divine within, for the blood is the life, and in its call can be heard the promise of eternal life. One has but to listen. The Blood of Vol refuse to acknowledge the existence of any god, and instead look inward to their own blood which they believe to be divine or holy. The only faith that is not misplaced is the faith in oneself and one's own capabilities. Priests of Vol pray for their spells each day, but they pray to themselves. It is certainly different from any Forgotten Realms religious path, and even in Eberron it could be considered a bit odd, yet it works. Clerics receive divine power from the divine spark that resides within the blood of mortals. The Blood of Vol came to be during a conflict involving elves and dragons. Tens of thousands of years ago, in the time of the giants, there was a dragon mark that appeared on some elves, the Mark of Death. It appeared on the elves of House Vol. Now the elves from House Vol sought to end the war between dragons and their kin, and believed they could unite the two races through a child. They sought to combine the blood of a green dragon and that of a House of Vol elf, and create a dragon-elf hybrid. Now I'm displaying some Dragonborn images, but keep in mind, this hybrid was not a Dragonborn. Dragonborn may find a place in Eberron, but they aren't part of the core races of Eberron. This child was unique, and to this day, nobody was quite sure of the process used to create her. This elf dragon baby girl was known as Arandis. Her parents were a female elf named Minara and a green dragon known as the Emerald Claw. His true name lost to history. The two believed this child would unite the two races and end the conflict, but they were misguided. Once word got out about the half-dragon's existence, mutual outrage between dragons and elves at what they were calling an abomination rose sharply. Ironically, it did bring the two races together, but not as they intended. Mutual fear and hatred allowed them to put their fighting aside and seek out the half-dragon Arandis and destroy her. The dragons and elves went to destroy not only Arandis, but all of House Vol as well. House Vol was destroyed, and with it the dragon mark of death, the lost dragon mark. The Emerald Claw dragon disappeared, and some say he died, others believe he fled and hid from the world, ashamed over what he had done. Minara aimed to protect her half-dragon child, and used her life and death powers to transform Arandis into a lich. Arandis was killed before she could master her magical dragon mark of death, and the mark is currently non-functional on a dead body. The lich ritual Minara performed was in Farlnin. Minara then hid Arandis' phylactery. Even Arandis doesn't know its location. She then magically sent her daughter away and was soon killed by a red dragon named Avothriax, who arrived with an army of elves to destroy House Vol. Many of House Vol fled to Corvair, and it was from these elves that the religion, the Blood of Vol, started. Soon, humans were indoctrinated into the Blood of Vol, each looking within themselves for the divinity they seek. Arandis de Vol is the only creature to still have the Mark of Death, but because she is undead, it has lost its power, serving only as a reminder of her heritage. She is still in Eberron, and you could craft a whole campaign involving her, the Emerald Claw, and the Blood of Vol. In 5e's Rising from the Last War, Arandis is called Lady Ilmaro. To the world, Lady Ilmaro is a powerful lich that controls the Order of the Emerald Claw, but in secret, she is Arandis. Believers in the Blood of Vol maintain that your soul is your very blood. Blood does not necessarily house the soul, but rather it is your soul, your divine spark. Thus, creatures that don't have blood have no soul and are removed from true divinity. Constructs, plants, and oozes contain no blood and thus have no real life. Blood holds the key to pass into the next life, the life everlasting. Believers, or seekers of the Blood of Vol, believe in Dol Ur, which is the realm of the dead, the gray limbo that a soul goes to when they die. Most people of Eberron are trying to escape that fate and seek the key to salvation through divinity within. Outward powers care not for you or your life in the everlasting, so you must look inward and hopefully you'll find your own afterlife, which is believed to be crafted particularly for your soul and is filled with happiness. Followers of the Blood of Vol see a dead body as nothing more than an empty husk. For good or bad, the soul has moved on and the body can be used for necromatic magic. 
Many followers are fine with their bodies serving the living one last time. Due to this necromancy, many view the blood of Vol as evil, or that they seek to become the undead. This is not true, as the followers are actually trying to ascend and become divine beings. An undead creature has no blood coursing through its body. It is cut off from the afterlife. Vampires and mummies in the blood of Vol serve as a guide to the living, but are viewed as martyrs, unable to attain what they preach to others about. Somewhere buried deep within the draconic prophecy, it was stated that a child born of a dragon and an elf could become a godlike avatar of death. This was a driving factor for the dragons of Eberron to destroy Arandis, to stop her from becoming this god. Arandis, or Lady Ilmaro as she is known, seeks to unlock her godlike powers. She increases her necromatic knowledge, looking for a way to restore the power to her dragon mark. The Blood of Vol followers have a low opinion of other religions in Eberron. The Silver Flame are considered empty-headed zealots. The Sovereign Host is looked upon with pity. Their gods care little for them. Druid sects are possibly the greatest enemy of the Blood of Vol. I say possibly because they are so close to each other. Both uphold nature, but Druids look to the natural world rather than seek within. Seek out the nature within the blood and give that reverence. This religion could be applied to just about any character in Eberron, and that's what I really like about it. A rogue that follows the blood of Vol, obviously a death cleric works, but a spore druid reflavored to have his magic come from within rather than nature. Thanks for watching, thanks for sharing these videos with your gaming group. Thank you so much, patrons, and I'll see you all in the next video.